Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, what I'm going to do is talk to you guys about Spinrite. Now, Spinrite might be an unlikely choice for a Linux-related YouTube channel, and it kind of is. But the thing is, this application does have a use case for Linux users. But what exactly is Spinrite? Well, Spinrite is a DOS utility, and its main purpose is to prevent and recover from data loss and hard drive failure, respectively. Spinrite is run from a USB flash drive or CD, so it bypasses the underlying operating system of your computer or server. Once booted, it'll give you a choice of a few different types of scans or levels, and once you run a desired test against a drive, you simply wait for the results. I'll talk more about Spinrite's capabilities as well as its pros and cons later in the video. Now, before we get started, though, I just wanted to mention that this video is not sponsored by GRC, the creator of Spinrite. Now, actually, I don't even know if GRC is even aware that this channel even exists. I've been using this app for quite some time, and I decided a long time ago to do a video about it. The thing is, back then, it was mentioned that 6.1 was being worked on, so I decided that it just didn't make sense to create a video about something that was going to just be updated, so I decided to wait. And that wait turned into, well, quite a long time. But now 6.1 is finally out, and I decided to give it a review in this video. But perhaps the bigger question, though, is why is the Linux guy reviewing a DOS application? Well, here's the thing. There's a great deal of Linux administrators and home lab fans within my audience. When it comes to my home lab audience, one of the many amazing things that they do is keep servers out of landfills. And that's awesome. People that are into self-hosting regularly repurpose out-of-date corporate equipment all the time, since servers that may no longer be good enough for the enterprise are still plenty good enough for all of you mad scientists out there. Now keep in mind, if you repurpose old servers, then you're also repurposing old hard drives. And that brings me to the first benefit that Spinrite has for Linux users. If you purchase a secondhand server, running Spinrite on it before you put it into production can only benefit you, as Spinrite can trigger error correction on hard disk better than the OEM tools can. This way, if there's any problematic sectors on any of your hard disks, it's a good idea to have them detected before you put a server into production, not after. Now, for those of you that have had servers in production for a long time, it's a good idea to run Spinrite on those every now and then, maybe every year or so. That's just a personal opinion on my side, but it shouldn't hurt. You might even find that your hardware performs better after doing so. I mean, your family can be without the Plex server for a little bit, can't they? Maybe it's a good excuse to go outside. Another use case for Spinrite is for data recovery. In fact, Spinrite is one of three bootable tools that I feel every administrator needs, the other two being Memtest86 and a live image of your favorite Linux distro. Now, if you've potentially lost files, perhaps your device isn't booting, then running Spinrite against the drive might actually help you get your files back. It's possible that Spinrite's error correction might even repair the drive, but I figure if you have to go through a bunch of work to get your files back, you may not want to trust that drive any longer, but I digress. Data recovery features make Spinrite very useful in the enterprise, but home users can definitely benefit from that too. Now, the way that Spinrite works, if I put it very simply, is that it gives your hard disk a bit of a workout. It writes complex data to sectors in order to test their read and write capability, and if there's a problem here, the sector will be marked bad and another will replace it. Now, to be fair, so far, that's nothing unique. Even the manufacturer's tools can do what I just described, and you can also do the same thing with open source tools, and there's probably a dozen or so other ways I could think of. But the value of Spinrite is that it tries really, really, really hard and focuses very intensely on your disk, more intensely than even the manufacturer's tools generally do. Basically, Spinrite has just one job, and it does it very well. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you can check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. 
Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. More specifically, there's three different operating modes or levels of Spinrite, and the one that you'll end up using depends on your needs. Level 1 is a more basic read test that's not super intensive, but is good enough to make sure all the data on your hard drive is readable. Level 2, on the other hand, kicks things up a notch and attempts recovery of any data found on your drive that might not be readable. That's why, if you want to perform data recovery, you might want to consider starting here. Level 3 is the most intensive, rewriting all data on your drive. This will help ensure that all data resides only in sections of your hard disk known to be within normal operation. However, this test might take a lot longer to complete. If you want to check out Spinrite for yourself, it'll set you back $89. So this isn't free software, but I figured that the price tag is reasonable for how useful it is, and who knows, maybe someone within my audience will find it useful. Once purchased, you'll receive a ridiculously tiny executable that's so small you'll probably think that your download was disconnected. But no, it's really that small. This executable will only run on Windows, unfortunately, but you only have to run it once since what it does is write Spinrite to a bootable drive, such as a flash drive. Of course, you can create bootable Spinrite media on macOS and Linux as well. There's an image file that's included that you can use with your platform's respective disk utility to create the media. Now, it's recommended that you use the Windows tool, though, but if you're oppositional, you could always write the image manually. Now, before you go and buy this, though, there are a few important downsides to consider. First, in order to use Spinrite, you'll need to modify the settings of your host device. In particular, what you'll need to do is boot into BIOS mode and also disable Secure Boot. Now, the author of Spinrite is quick to caution against disabling Secure Boot unless you read the documentation first, so that way you can understand if there's any other ramifications of doing so. Generally speaking, you'll switch your computer to BIOS mode and disable Secure Boot, run Spinrite, and then go back to your computer settings and set everything back to the way it was before continuing to use it. It sounds like a pain, and, well, it is. But thankfully, Steve mentions that future versions will address this. My advice is rather than changing your computer settings, you could repurpose an old desktop as a Spinrite machine. What you could do is power it on, disable Secure Boot, switch it to BIOS mode, and then leave it powered off. Then, what you could do anytime you want to use Spinrite is you could take the drive out of the device and just run it from the Spinrite computer. But that might be overkill for some of you, but who knows? Thankfully, though, the biggest downside has been addressed in version 6.1. For the longest time, Spinrite has been very slow, painfully slow. And this is another reason why I was waiting for the latest version to come out before reviewing it. It was so slow that it wasn't uncommon for me to leave a machine running over the weekend, and most of the time, a scan would be finished by the time it came back. However, 6.1 has a rewritten engine that is much faster than before, and I could definitely notice the difference. In fact, this is the main selling point of the new version. I received 6.1 as a free upgrade from having purchased the original version a long time back, and I think this speed boost more than makes it worth the wait. Another potential downside when it comes to Spinrite is that purchasing it can be somewhat like an insurance policy that you may or may not find useful. I mean, think of it this way. You don't know ahead of time if you're going to suffer a data recovery issue and have to recover data. You can't really know that ahead of time. So if you purchase Spinrite, you're purchasing something for a problem that you hope you never have, but if you do have that problem, then, well, you hope that it's useful. And whether or not it's useful really depends on the problem that you're trying to solve. Spinrite is not something that's going to fix every hard drive issue. If your computer itself can't even detect the hard drive, then Spinrite won't be able to do that either. So we need to have, you know, reasonable expectations here. But as long as we do that, then Spinrite is really useful. That said, I think Spinrite is worth the purchase. Sure, it's one of those things that you hope you'll never need, and if you do need it, you hope to be glad that you did get it. But aside from that, it's also good for preventative maintenance as well, and it might even give you a performance boost. Now, let me know what you think of Spinrite or any other tool that I mentioned on this channel in the description down below. I can't wait to read what you guys have to say. In the meantime, though, definitely subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux if you haven't already done that, and I'll see you in the next video.